that would buy up patents and build up portfolios to attack uh, other people with, and that the patent had to remain with the creator of its uh, uh, the original creator. Um, that's a way of fighting patent trolls, but it's more of a U.S. issue, as far as I can tell. I, I can think of only one company based in Belgium, which is kind of like a patent troll in Europe. I don't really know of any European companies passing pet patents around. It's more of a U.S. thing, as far as I can tell. And uh, and it's more of a practice now. And they also they also favor the uh, uh, Eastern District of Texas to do the lawsuits in. Uh, I think it's in Tyler and, and in certain courts that tend to have good basis for them to successfully litigate against companies, and this is where they go. Uh, I don't think I've seen any patent troll recently in Europe trying to assert any rights, and that's actually a good sign. It tells you that the uh, you can contain or you can kind of com compartmentalize the the issue and keep it away in a certain box. You also give some incentive for companies to move to Europe uh, for development, and this possibly happened to a certain degree now. Um, but again, you, you don't you don't actually solve all the issues. This is just trying to solve the issue with with trolls, and uh, and they have lobbies as well now, so they have possibly millions of dollars spent in just trying to influence people and, and ensuring they can water down any attempted reform. And when you hear about patent reform these days, you probably think, oh, fixing the patent issues, but it's, in some ways it can make things even worse. So it's just a change in the law. In the, in the law. It's, it's, it is a reform, but it's not reform for the better. It's just a deform in some sense. Um, so I'm quite pessimistic about it. And I, and I think as long as we allow the expansion of copyright, we spoke about copyright in the previous show, and you probably know, do you know about the uh, Mickey Mouse extension of copyrights, as, as it's called? The, basically, the company's always extending the copyright, so you can never get Mickey Mouse in mm. the public domain. Uh, it, it just shows you, as time goes by, if we take more and more and more away, and we are being marginalized instead of it being the other way around. And, uh, yeah. um, Gordon, uh, as we said earlier, um, and I'm blaming the UK weather here. Um, Gordon's been having some difficulty at his end uh, with the audio, and he's asked me to um, put forward a link um, for this uh, for the show. I don't know if you can see the link, Roy. It's on the Freedom yeah. Software uh, page. Yeah. I, I don't know. Do you have any um, any comments, any uh, any feedback in regards to um, the Freedom the recent Freedom Law show? Um, yeah. Well, they, they did a uh, special coverage about the um, about the uh, not just the Bielski case, they do, they, do, they do cover a lot of to do with patents because they deal a lot with copyrights and patents and things like that. And uh, I think Bradley is no longer with this. Uh, he's, he started a new website and, uh, and I think he now spends more time with the FSF. Um, what the show talks about, and hopefully it'll be in the show notes, uh, and I think I did listen to this one, it's, it's, uh, it's a discussion about what should be patentable and what shouldn't be and how the um, tests in the United States have changed for what's applicable and what isn't. So, but it hasn't actually improved recently. We just get more and more monopolies like that. Um, and it takes, I think, 18 years now for a uh, for a software patent to expire. Um, so, like, like I said, it, it's 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 really quite bad. Uh, when you have some countries in, China, in in Asia, including China now, it's not just Japan, um, giving Microsoft giving Microsoft some money for their phones, um, and, and we have to do something about it. I'm just really uh, yeah, I'm concerned because not, not many people are thinking about this is the main issue. They just close their eyes and they just kind of tend to ignore people who talk about these issues. But I mean, sorry. Firstly, two points. Um, the link that you'll find on the show notes for the um, Software Freedom Law Show is episode five, uh, series zero. I think that means um, it's not a current uh, show. It was from the twentieth of January two thousand and nine, but uh, apparently it's a very, very, very good listen to. So I will be putting that link in the show notes. That's what we've just been talking about. Um, sorry, sorry Ryan, I, I, I was, was going to say my connection seems to have gotten better just in the last few seconds, so I can talk now. Um, yeah, sorry, that the episode five, that's what I was desperately trying to find. 
the, the show that, that, that there's just been mentioned is Eben Moglan is it's a talk that he did um, that was broadcast um, that was included as a segment in, in the Software Freedom Law uh, show. It is, it is brilliant. I mean, I, I love this guy. I really do. Um, the way he's, he, he explains, he sets out what the patent system was originally designed for, what it was supposed to do, and what it's turned into. So, yeah, it's, it's very much worth a listen. Yes, well, essential listening. Yeah, um, yeah. Going, going back to um, very quickly, you, you mentioned just before um, Gordon came on that uh, it's um, we, sh- we should be fighting against, obviously, um, Microsoft's intrusion into... Um, into the phone, into Android phones, um, and patents in general. How the would you suggest? Apps, to an extent. Yeah. Yes. And and how would you how would you suggest to the average user who maybe hasn't considered patent uh, issues before, or maybe is just starting to look into this whole uh, topic? How how would you suggest that they get involved? Well, I suppose uh, one of the, the things we did with Novell in two thousand and six is trying to discourage people from using uh, SUSE. So basically use a distribution which doesn't pay, basically trying to weaken those who pay Microsoft as a way of trying to influence them, and also a way of basically uh, showing Microsoft that the market chooses based on on the conditions that are imposed by Microsoft. If Microsoft says that you have to pay for Android, you will avoid the routes through which Microsoft makes the money. Uh, and, and I think one of the uh, mains, the main Roots to do that. If you want an Android phone, Motorola is the one actually fighting against Microsoft and trying to defend against PAN. So for a while I said, well, Android, Android's main phone, which doesn't pay Microsoft, is any phone from Motorola, and mainly the Droid, and I think they have Droid 2 coming, coming out soon, and, and all the rest of the phones will be kind of seen as ways of basically sharing your money with Microsoft based on the fact that you buy something which has nothing to do with Microsoft. Uh, that, that's just one way, which is that that's the sort of the boycott way. Or the sort of vote, voting with your feet, as it were. Yeah, well, the, the issue is not many people will do anything to uh, not even be aware of these issues. Uh, so we've, well, sometimes it passes from uh, between people, between peers, and I know with Novell, they, they got a very bad reputation from the from 2006 onwards, and Fewer people would use there, even though they had better products in many areas. Fewer people would use them because they just knew that Novell had something wrong with it. Uh, so that, that that's one way of weakening a company which would later sell its patents to to Microsoft, which which wasn't exactly uh, shocking to me. Uh, but the other thing that we need to do is, is to actually fix the law, because because trying to to avoid lots of companies, especially now you have more and more of them. Uh, you know, being surrendering because they see the prior uh, trail of corpses, all those companies surrendering, Microsoft comes to them and says, well, we had hundreds of companies paying us for these patents and you have no chance in court uh, and they have to pay too. Uh, the, the way to, to, to do something about it is to change the law to say, well, this is unjust and we have to try and challenge this, this thing. And I don't think we have enough companies banding together and trying to eradicate this issue. You have IBM, you have Google, but they're not against software patents. Some people think they are, but they aren't exactly against software patents. They have their own convenience with their fields of choice. It can be mainframes and it can be uh, something with search, and they have their convenience with their own software patents. And, and you have to also pressure these companies to explain to people these companies are part of the problem because they enjoy having their own monopolies in their field, and they aren't going to fix anything. Uh, so, yeah. It's, well, it, sorry. Yeah, it, it, it's like I say, it's a very um, saddening situation. I find that uh, lots of us don't really know what to do about it, except for creating more and more petitions and trying to talk to politicians, but we don't have as much time as the lobbyists do. And, and Microsoft employs these people to work around Europe and even pretend to be small businesses and working full-time deceiving the press and pretending to be small businesses in favor of, of software patents. Uh, so uh, just really nasty things. Trying to expose these people is one way of discouraging politicians from listening to these people and to uh, 
to actually look at the right studies that say pants and software pants don't encourage innovation, so you should continue to disallow this, you know, this menace. Right. Well, I hope um, we've covered uh, quite a few issues on patents. I hope 